to be cheating because uh, I talked to Dan <laughs> about the whole thing. <laughs> okay, well, thank you for being uh, truthful there. Um, uh, but Bree is correct. All the, when, when everybody put their arms out in the direction of their compasses, north-facing uh, needle, they were all in different directions, very distinctly different directions. And initially, I was thinking that the compasses would all point to an intersection somewhere in the middle of the uh, diameter that we could maybe pinpoint as the source of some kind of electromagnetic uh, uh, disturbance, maybe even a vortex or something that we could uh, discover in this uh, kind of, you know, little scenario that we were trying to uh, determine. So since uh, we couldn't figure out why that was happening, we decided uh, to check out Dan Weiss's automobile itself to try to figure out, you know, if this uh, vehicle itself might be uh, doing something to all of our compasses. So sure enough, uh, what I did is I had Dan hold a compass in his hand as a matter of fact, to make sure that this compass was reacting properly, because you know how sometimes you can tilt a compass one way or another, and it will maybe uh, affect the needle uh, for facing north. Um, uh, uh, Ray Leo decided to put a little um, leveling uh, device on top of the compass in his hand, so that he had to hold the bubble right in the middle of the uh, on the measuring device to make sure that the compass was perfectly flat and then i had him hold a uh, stick up in on top of the uh, compass and point the stick in the direction that the north facing needle is pointing as he walked around his car now i'll ask uh uh, I don't know. I, you probably will know the answer to this, Mary. So I'll ask uh, uh, Bree now. What do you think happened to that compass as it walked around the car that Dan was driving that died the night before? Uh, nothing. I would say it, it didn't respond. That's my oh, guess. Oh, the compass just froze, in other words, is what you would think? Yes. Okay. That's that's a good uh, good hypothesis for sure. Since it was so close to the actual vehicle, if that was uh, the one that was giving everything a pr the problem, what really happened was it was fascinating. As he was walking around his vehicle, pointing the stick in the direction of the compass, it 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 created a uh, a pattern that actually looked like there was a north or a positive uh, part of this vehicle, and then there was a negative part of the vehicle in the back. So, in other words, what happened was that this total vehicle was in the shape of a, a bar magnet. Uh, there was a north side to it. There was a negative side. Um, not north. There was a positive side to it and a negative side to it. Just as if you would take some metal filings and drop it on and around a bar magnet on a flat surface, there would be a bulge in the front and a bulge in the back, and then in the middle it would go closer to the actual bar magnet. This is exactly the pattern that came uh, from their car. And then the strange thing was, it was only the outer um, uh, shell of the vehicle that responded in this manner. As a matter of fact, we even posited that maybe the source of the magnet magnetization was coming from inside the vehicle itself. And so what we did is we put multiple magnets inside the uh, passenger compartment and the back seat compartment inside of the uh, car, and they just reacted normally. They didn't react like the skin of the vehicle reacted when he walked around it. And we all tried this as well. Even, uh, uh, Scotty, with his digital meter, tried to to get it to kick in, and it still did not work the entire time. So um, that was puzzling. At first, we thought, well, maybe this it, this car 
itself is parked on some kind of a portal, some kind of a, you know, you, you walk or you go down on road trips and every once in a while you find the, uh, the mystery forest, you know, the, the house of mysteries where you can go and it looks as if water is flowing uphill and uh, electromagnetic effects are, uh, you know, affecting, you know, strange things uh, in those kind of tourist traps that you can walk into every once in a while. I think they're fascinating myself, by the way. I love to go to those things. But we thought, well, we're going to move the vehicle away from this spot and we're going to retest the spot with the compasses and see if uh, indeed it was coming from the ground or that general area uh, where the par- car was parked. So we had Dan jump in the vehicle and move it uh, uh, completely away from the area at all. Matter of fact, we had him park it up on a road that was next to the campsite, the road that we actually came into this uh, area on, just to make sure it was far enough away not to make a uh, difference in our calculations. And when we did that, we did the compass test again in that area, uh, in the perimeter of that area, and then we went right into the middle of the area, and nothing uh, anomalous was there. Matter of fact, the compasses all pointed directly true north, uh, right in that area, with no uh, electrical or electromagnetic um, disturbance at all. And uh, when we went back up to the road to retest the vehicle, sure enough, the same thing happened. The whole vehicle was uh, electromagnetically charged on the skin of the vehicle in the shape of a bar magnet, which is unusual to me. I mean, this was the entire vehicle. Uh, was uh, giving off that pattern of a bar magnet being one end was positive, the other end was negative as you walk the um, uh, the compass around the car. So I'm, I'm going to stop right there just for a moment to allow you two to uh, munch that over and maybe give your opinions on what that phenomena might be. Uh, to well, me, I, it just. Oh, go ahead, Mary. Well, I was just—I was going to say I—I I don't know. Um, that's it, it's kind of something I have not heard of before. But I did just want to mention. Um, well, I'm thinking about it that when I talked to Dan and he was telling me about these things, he one he was going to go and um, back to the dealership and double check this to see if it happens with the other. Um, cars that are the same make and model and year and you know just to to rule out any possible you know this being a natural phenomena with that particular car and the other thing was he told me that he had talked to Jasmine who was our wonderful camp host and she said the same night that you guys were experiencing the problem with batteries and the cars dying that she had reports of uh, two or three other people in the campground that weren't in any way affiliated with our group having the same thing, dead car batteries for no apparent reason. <laughs> I know. When I heard that, I just I just thought to myself, oh, my goodness, this isn't just one car at one campsite. This is many other people on that very same night uh, their vehicles were affected electromagnetically, just like yours was, Mary, the night before. Right, right. So I thought that was that was really interesting. Well, it sounds to me like it's just different energies that we're not aware of coming in and reacting in a vortex space where, and it's something that, you know, we're not used to, we haven't experienced it, or we, you've experienced it, but you don't experience it often. It's not a common experience. And I, I just feels like it's the, the entire area is of a different energy than most of the parts of the earth that we live in. And that's mm. purely intuition. That's how, that's what comes to me of, of what, 
and why all these different things were happening with the batteries and the compasses. Yes, and that is fascinating uh, to think that this entire area might be affected for, by, by some kind of external force to cause this electromagnetic problem in that area. But you know it would be interesting for me to, to ask uh, if, if uh, Jasmine, the camp host at Taklak Lake, would have any information from anyone else who had some kind of missing time that night. You know, if anybody else uh, had stories of potentially uh, getting up in the middle of the night uh, and coming back and losing some uh, more than 10 minutes, you know, of time that they can't account for. Um, And the interesting issue that seems to, I seem to come back to is that at about the same time uh, that Dan's car uh, would not turn on, in other words, he couldn't turn his lights on at about 3.15 in the morning or so. He couldn't turn his car on at that time. Um, That exact same time is when the battery died in the camp trailer that uh, I was sleeping in as well. So that's quite a coincidence at that point. And then the other third coincidence that is just mind-blowing to me That exact same time, up on the mountain, uh, Mount Adams, where Lee Strauss and Philip Wade are camping, and their young cameraman, uh, Daniel, wakes up to lights that are flashing, uh, strobing, he says, on the uh, wall of the outside of their tent. Uh, He looks at his watch, and it happens to be 315 or so a, at at that same night. I mean, the co- what coincidence is that? That's no coincidence. <laughs> right, no coincidence at all. Maybe when you ask her, Michael, you could also ask her about other weekends and months past and see if there's a pattern. Yes. It wasn't just that night, but if it's been ongoing, different weekends, different nights same type of uh, activity? Yeah, there definitely seems to be some kind of, uh, uh, well, multiple things. Oh, you okay there? Um, you're hitting feedback big time into the into the microphone there. Is that Kathy? Is that Bree? Uh, yeah, it could have been me. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, be careful. It just overwhelms us on this end when you do that. Um, what I'm thinking is that either... It's that area in itself with the uh, potential vortex or electromagnetic effects that are causing these uh, things to go wrong with people's vehicles. Or, uh, of course, the really far out thing to think about is whether uh, there are actual uh, UFO abductions going on in this area as well. Uh, Of course, we've all heard the stories of you know, cars that are driving down the highway, uh, some secluded highway in the middle of the night, and uh, their cars just die. The electronics, uh, electromagnetic uh, effects affect the actual vehicle, and it just rolls to a stop. And, uh, of course, then uh, we've also heard about uh, the the idea that uh, people have missing time at the same time that they're going through an abduction experience as well. Uh, I'll, I'll throw that out to both of you just to kind of uh, respond to if you could. Well, Michael, well, one thing, I, they may have told you when you went to East Seti Ranch that there's only specific places you can park they say don't park in this one area or this one side of the driveway because if you do your battery will die oh my did they they mention that to you (laughs) i i did not hear that mary um you want to elaborate a little bit on that and what uh, who told you this and uh, what the experience has been yeah it was james gillian that that uh said that and I forget which you know. I've been up there two or three times, and um, one of the, one of the times he was saying you can't you can't park your car 
on, and I, I can't remember the exact side of the driveway.